the HSBC Women's Champions, part of the race to the CME Globe. Sport at the elite level is increasingly becoming a young person's domain. Dedication to fitness, attention to detail, and a willingness to practice and then practice some more have become the mantra of those who crave a place at the top. But one quality that only the years can bring is experience. The ability to face challenges and answer them, to stay calm in the face of the oncoming storm, Today at Sentosa Golf Club, two players who possess that elusive quality head the field in the quest for the title. An icon of the game, Australia's Kari Webb has tasted victory no fewer than 40 times on the LPGA Tour. Her thirst for winning has never been quenched. The Hall of Famer leads by one with a round to play from another past champion. Angela Stanford lifted this trophy back in 2012. Her steely determination and never-say-die attitude will make her an intimidating force as Sunday rolls on. But the chasing pack is laden with talent. Spanish starlet at the Jara Munoz produced a stunning Saturday charge into contention. 26-year-old Teresa Liu has proven to be the surprise packer. Unheralded, perhaps, talented, undoubtedly. So close here 12 months ago, America's sweetheart Paula Kremer is lying in wait should the leaders falter. And Norway's Suzanne Pedersen has dual reason to chase the title. A victory here could realise her ambition to finally assume the mantle as the world number one. So the stage is set for an epic battle in Singapore. And when that battle reaches its zenith, that elusive trait of experience could very well prove the difference between glory and heartbreak. And Angela Stanford is rallying beautifully after the birdie at 12. Gets her back to within three shots of Kari Webb's lead. She's got the honor. Your honor. Well done. Uh, we've seen a lot of drama unfold here last year when Stacey Lewis won. Here is Morgan Pressel playing to the 13th. Remember, Stacey Lewis had a three-shot lead, but bogeyed the 15th hole and the 17th hole. It really is a super demanding test of closing holes. Nicely done from Morgan. Had a bit of break both ways, right to left, then left to right down towards the hole. Given herself a chance of making her par and remaining plus one for the day. In line for a big check, as we said. It's a good advertisement for married life. The way she started off 2014. Flying high over Singapore. You're lucky, Kate, because you are a resident of this uh, great place. One of the most amazing cities in the world. No question about that. Oh, extremely fortunate to live here. Yes, that's a view back over harbour front there. Uh, those uh, condos in the distance are reflections. There's a big cruise liner about to take off somewhere rather nice. And the cable car, very popular indeed, certainly with my children. <laughs> we spent a lot of time up there. Oh, Harry and Abby looked as though they were having a great time right. Oh, they had a good time yesterday, yes, terrorising the golf course. Morgan Pressel gave them a golf lesson as well. Parting lesson from Morgan Pressel. So thank you very much, Morgan. The HSBC World Suite is where the interactive zone is beside the 18th green and you can get in there and get up to all sorts of things and the kids especially in 
In fact, I think we had one very big kid in there. Kate Burton, didn't you visit that area yesterday? Oh, my gosh, that's the best fun. Yes, there's the, the Wii <laughs> that you could go on. There's a golf simulator and prizes to be won every day. And there is... Well, uh, HSBC are the official banking partner of Wimbledon, the championship, so you can have your photo taken on centre court. Oh, very nearly went in. And a chance to putt as well. Well, I don't know whether they can putt as well as Paula Creamer, but she's going to need all of her putting skills here. This is a slippery one. Three putt territory at 13. That's a very good try from Paula Creamer. Because if that picked up any more pace, that would have just continued to run on. That's a difficult pass saver required. We've just seen the tee shots at 13, Kate, and we talked about the water down the right-hand side, and then it comes in at a very sharp angle. It's such a tough second shot. And not many players will be able to afford to take driver, because if you do, the narrow landing area where that 150 sign is is literally 15 yards wide. So a lot of the players will be going in with a three-wood off the tee to set themselves up for their second. But the problem is that when you're taking a three-wood off the tee, you're then left with sometimes, you know, four-iron, a hybrid into a highly demanding green. And uh, it's fourth hardest hole on the golf course. We saw anything slightly left of the pin, and you're coming in with a fair bit of pace, will just carry off into that back swale. The young Singaporean, Amanda Tan, oh, yes. is one of only two players who made a three here oh. all day. Oh, well, good for Amanda Tan, because that's been the best outing for her, but a tremendous learning experience all the same. Alison Walsh was the other. Kari just bringing this way down the left side towards the bunker. Now, I want some legs to get over. It's over. Yeah, I think it's going to get caught up in the rough on the other side, Kate. Mm. Yes, it's in the light rough, the first cut. Crucial part for Karima. Stay within touching distance of Webb. Uh oh. oh. Wow. We said three putt territory, but after her first putt, it didn't look as though Paula needed to worry about that. Is that the end of the charge? Well, bear in mind, Kari. Is going to have a difficult second shot in because she hasn't found the short grass, but can't afford that to happen at all in the run to the clubhouse if Paula is going to finally collect that long-awaited win. A bogey, a three-putt bogey from long range. And she will be only too aware of what how costly that drop shot might well prove to be. Munoz on the tee at 13. Got to keep a little bit on the left-hand side here because of the tight pin. And Nath doing that. She's got a good line right edge of the left bunker. Yes, we caught up with Peter Downey early this morning, the outgoing Saudi director of golf at Sentosa Golf Club, and his uh, thoughts on the golf course were when it's a right pin come in from the left side of the fairway. Sometimes you can really work your way back from where the hole location is as to what club is demanded from the tee. So Webb now the leader by three after the bogey by Paula Creamer. Bakari has a difficult second shot coming. All right, Kari has uh, made her way up to her position in the rough, getting ready for a second shot here on 13. This thing should come out hot with that club and that lie. And it did to her advantage. That was a superb shot by Webb. It looked like she got a little bit of fade on that golf ball to get it to land softly because we saw just in previous shots, Creamers as an example, you get it to scamper on through if you keep it too low and then you're faced with a severely testing part from the back of the green. What's Angela Stanford got remaining, Sandy? Angela's got 1-8-1 one, one, and this is with iron straight at it. Now it's got to get some legs. It's going to get the bunker. Trying to be very aggressive. 
once again, Stanford finds herself in a spot of bother. Well, let's see if we can have a repeat of what we saw at 14 yesterday. Some amazing shot making at 14. Different pin today, of course. It's only 42 on oh, the pin at 14. And eight from the left. About where Morgan Pressel's going to put it. What a shot. Hey, she listened to you. That's a tremendous shot because the hole isn't considerably harder today given the whole location. 14th today is the 13th most difficult hole on the golf course, but it's very different to what it was because of that pin placement. Amongst the Rainbirds, Ather, second to 13. Chase up. And now sit down. Now she'll get a bit of a look at the line from Kari. Not exactly the same line, but pretty similar. There'll be steam coming out of the ears of Paula Creamer. Dropping that shot at 13 when she thought she probably had the job done with a 60-foot putt. Not thrilled with that one either. Good miss, if you would call it that. She's got a bit of a chance of getting it back. But she's going to have to take every chance that presents itself now because Paula Creamer and the rest of the field are running out of holes to try and get over the top of Kari Webb. We know how good she is when she's forced to make up a deficit. She did that, a five-shot deficit, to win the Australian Open Championship recently. And now she has a three-shot advantage, and that spells trouble for the rest of the field. Webb at 12 under. Heading towards a second crown in Singapore. Still plenty of golf to be played before she can lift the trophy, though. All right, while we're in break, this was uh, Angela Stanford out of the bunker at 13. And you can see she had virtually no green to work with. And little backstop here is going to make that shot turn out a lot better than I originally thought. That's for sure. She's got a chance to save par, which she has to do. Just three shots back of this one, who we joined live now. With this lengthy birdie putt. This would pretty much wrap things up if this could drop. That might be an indicator of Kari's mindset. She's not playing for the two parts. She wants to give them a chance of going in. Very makeable birdie part for Paula Creamer to edge that bit closer to Webb. Oh. Nice try. Creamer uh, will remain three behind Webb. It's been a very good start, though, to Paula Creamer. For Paula Creamer in 2014, she was tied for third in the Bahamas, tied for third in Australia. Not so good last week in Thailand, but once again finds herself currently in second place in Singapore. Tough shot here for He Kyung So at 17 because the ball's sitting right down, so she's going to need to execute this perfectly. And that's what she's done, getting the advice from... Dean Hurden, who's got his old Caddy of the Year bib on today. So there's Caddies of the Year everywhere out there <laughs> because not, Brad Beach is in the group as well. He's not going to give that bib up too quickly. Birdie chance for Munoz. Again, down the hill. Just got to be cautious of the pace. Oh, she's going to come up shy. Now that's going to be a horror. Uh, Peter, I have a little update for you out here too. Mm. Uh, the group in front of us has been given an official warning for slow play. OK, so that's Teresa Liu, Paula Creamer and Morgan Pressel. Yeah, so they are on the clock and our group's been told to move along as well. OK, thank you, Sandy. On the spot, on the course. Great tee shot from Morgan Pressel. Makes it two. And that wouldn't be the first time that Morgan Pressel's been given a warning for slow play. That has happened before in her career. So she's walking off with a smile on her face. Yeah, maybe jogging and getting to the 15th tee as quickly as possible. 
Angel Stanford to complete the up and down. Oh, what an up and down that would be from it the bunker. Would. Yeah. Got to admire her courage. As I said, Kate, it would have been easy to get despondent about the start that you have when things were potentially so positive at the start of the day, but she's just hung in there and tried to claw it back bit by bit. Oh, that was a tremendous sand save from Angela Stanford. Keeps her at nine under, three behind Webb. It sounds a lot three shots, but when you've got the stretch of holes coming, you've got 15 and 16, which are so hard. 17th is the ninth most difficult hole on the course. And even though the stats tell you that 18 is not as tough, all of a sudden you come to 18 to win the championship exactly. and you get that front left pin. Well, it becomes tough. Don't worry about what the stats tell you. The stats are saying that the 15th is the hardest hole and the 16th is the second yeah. hardest hole. So what that equates to is that Kari Webb can't quite start rehearsing her victory speech just yet. Stalking this from every angle. And there's plenty of reason why, because uh, there's the slope on both sides of this, the one that is on the right-hand side of Atha going towards the hole. It, it's like it's in a little gully, but you know there's going to be movement around the hole. It's actually a bit hard to judge which way it's going to go. There should be just, a, a, by the look of it, it looks like there's a tiny bit of right to left. But it, she's in an awkward spot. And it'll be quick, of course. I've said that a few times this week, Sandy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've just repeated myself over and over again, and I have, but uh, you just can't comprehend how slippery these are. 12.1 on the stint metre, so just about as quick as the LPGA players putt on. Well, it was worth all that care and attention. Atha stays minus eight, four back. Struggling today is Teresa Liu. Here we find her on the 15th. She had a terrific drive here yesterday. Mm. Not sure she's hit one here. No. Uh, oops. Oh, 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 crikey. Good evasive skills. Cry goodness me. We've got, got a seven from the Russian judge for that one. <laughs> Two and a half with Pike. <laughs> Back to that at 15 shortly. Important putt here for Kari Webb. It's only about three feet. She's done this so well so far today. Oh, oh. And here we go again. Well, this part uh, makes things a little bit interesting. Now at the pointy end of the leaderboard. She's not going to be in love with this stretch of the golf course. Remember, it was 13 the other day where she had a bit of a hiccup and was able to get things back on track. It was 13, 14, 15 wasn't a good stretch. 16 onwards was pretty good. So the door is open slightly for Paula Creamer, not that she knows it. Turned away, but she'll be happy with the result. Fourteen, measuring just 165. What a pretty hole it is. But it's the first of two holes where the water and the wind in particular, Kate Burton, come into play. The wind is definitely a factor. Less so today than it has on previous days, but it's still set, set there certainly to take into consideration. Yesterday, the pin was all the way at the front, but now, well, it's Sunday. It's the final day of the HSBC Women's Champions, and so they are going to put the pin in a lot more of a testing location. So you've really got to fly it all the way out over that green side bunker you are flirting with the water for those players who do elect to come in with a slight fade and then anything a bit too strong and you hit the down slope at the back of the green it's a cracking par three such a spectacular part of the golf course well it's very pretty in some ways but it's extremely ugly in others because that left back pin is very close to the water 
123 to the front, 165 to the back. She's a little bit right of the flag, Angela, but that'll do, that's okay. Do you think that bogey that we've just seen from Kari might alter her mindset, Sandy, or is it just steady as she goes? Well, I think it would have come as unexpected because she was just looking for a safe two putt there. And uh, to let you know, Pete, I'm actually standing a long, long way away from the tee because I don't dare go near it at the moment. Yeah, probably a good idea. Theresa Lou, not for the first time today, trying to thread the eye of the needle, and this time she did it a bit more successfully. That was at 15 as we returned to Atha on the tee at the par three be a brave shot to get it right into that back left corner. Now this is a good line, just fractionally right of the flag. Nice shot from Atha. Super shot from Atha. That was very brave. <laughs> Do you think she was saying to Johnny Scott, her caddy, what? It's got quite a strong accent, old Johnny Scott. Just a little bit. Yeah. If you got Johnny, Vern Tess, who was on the bag for Katrina Matthew, got those three together. <laughs> They'd be able to understand each other. It. Yeah. Like he's probably not having much to say just at the moment. No. Well, the breeze is coming again into them, off, slightly off the left-hand side. Nowhere near as strong as we've had, but uh, just uh, it's, a, it's a brave shot in here. It's a tough pin to get to. Will the great champion respond to what's just happened at 13? The contact is good. She is well right, just towards the centre of the green. Okay, the furthest of these three away. A club shy too. Pretty much the percentage shot. But that's going to also test Kari Webb a little bit. That's a relatively long way from the hole. 15, Paula Kramer to get now within one. Oh, what a great putt. Paula Kramer, three under on a round, 10 under par for the championship, and just a one back of the leader, Kari Webb. And Kari's got herself another challenging approach putt here on 14. You can see the humps and bumps that she's got to negotiate. Changes in grain. And this coming right after a three putt. That was pretty well done there by Kari. And she, of course, will not know that Paula has gotten within one. So this to maintain sole possession of the lead. So it's gotten extremely interesting here on the back nine at the Sentosa Golf Club, the Sirapong course as Kari Webb trying to win for the second time in just a couple of weeks. Paula Kramer trying to win for the first time since winning the U.S. Women's Open in 2010. That's how long it's been. And back to the final threesome, Beth Munoz now, her birdie putt. This to get within two. There we go. So just a few minutes ago, it looked like Kari Webb was about to put a stranglehold on this lead and has not been able to do it. That three putt on the previous hole and that bogey extremely costly. And Kari saw a chance to make birdie and went charging that putt past the hole. And now all these players who are on the fringe of dropping out or back in. A positive stroke there from Angela. She gets buried. She's back in the hunt. Well, let's see if Kari can settle herself here on uh, 15. She doesn't uh, need to know what Paul is doing ahead of her because right next to her, Angela Stanford has clawed back to within one. Wow. I mean, this is uh, just an unraveling from Kari. Thank you, 
Head wrapping up her tournament. 19 year old Lexi Thompson finishing in red numbers. And back now to Paula on 16. Saw Kari actually make birdie from just that spot yesterday. And that did not jump out of that lie like Paula was hoping and expecting. So they're safe. Kari is not. This is on the 15th fairway. Sandy McKenzie is down there. Yes, yeah, just working out here where they actually have to uh, place the ball because of where it entered into the water. So they've identified that spot. Kari will now mark it. Uh, give herself a couple of club lengths, but she is going to be playing her third shot. There has been just a dramatic turnaround the last couple of holes. And we talked about it, Sandy, the other day she went through the patch where 13 and 15 were the holes where she had the most difficulty. Who says lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place? It's quite an extraordinary drive, that, because you would have thought, if anything, she would have really stayed right on it, but uh, just turned it over a little bit, and, yeah, she's up against it now. Well, now it's that temperament that we talked about at the start of our coverage as well that comes into play. I can't afford to panic. Bogey is probably going to be the best score she might make. And we'll get to Kari shortly. Ather, in the meantime, is going to bomb away. Plenty of breeze here at the moment. Ather has 190 to the flagstick into the wind. 171 to reach the front. Now the wheat, now she stopped because the breeze has just picked up as well. She's seeing firsthand what's happened to Kari, so she's got to be thinking, I'm still there, I'm still in this. Oh, it's certainly going to give her a spark. And also, you've got to remember, too, they've got to catch up some ground, this group, because they have dropped a long way behind. Ball slightly above her feet. The contact is good. The line is good. It's coming, it's out to the right. It's coming back a little bit, or wind's starting to push it out a little bit. Oh, that might be a bit strong. It is a little bit strong, Sandy, and it has scarpered on through the back of the green. She finds herself in the first cut of rough. Well, they are now well and truly a hole behind, and they were a hole behind before Carrie went at the water. This is taking you back to Friday and what happened. There was a song once, history never repeats. Well, it does because Stacey Lewis did the same thing last year. She put it in the water in one of the earlier rounds and then put it in the water on Sunday. And now Kari Webb does it on Friday and Sunday. Is that going to be the shot which more than any other shot determines the outcome? It's going to be a very tense next few holes for Kari Webb. Her third now into 15. It's from 182, Kate into the breeze. Now she's got very high ball flight. Now this is right, this is on the right side. She's going to be a long, long way away from the pin. It's going to have to come round. Well, it's actually starting to come back a little bit more and it's pin high. So it, it's not a bad result considering what has just happened to her in the last five minutes. She's been given a warning for slow play. She tugged her tee shot off the tee into the water. Here is her third. It's a lovely swing. This is a good swing of Kari's. Gets herself beautifully into the back of the ball. Nobody is more aware of the issue of slow play than Kari Webb. She is a part of the board that talks about that all the time, the advisory board. Angela Stanford, too, sees herself right in the mix now. From 170 for Angela, it's just started right, drawing back. This is a seriously good-looking shot. 
Is it what? Now she's got that putt to go to 11 under, and if it falls, she's the leader. Now let me take that back. She's nine under, so she'll go to 10. Kari will drop back to at least 10, so she could be the joint leader. And when you thought that she was seemingly out of it after what can only be described as a very shoddy start for Angela Stanford. Oh, this is very exciting. So many different permutations that could happen in oh, the next could, three quarters of an could hour. Could you go to the toilet for me? I don't want to leave. <laughs> I think I'll just stay here and watch Paula Creamer, who's also in three-putt territory. Good try. Oh, that's strong, but my goodness me, what a demanding par putt is required by Creamer to stay just one behind Webb, who surely looks like she's going to drop a shot on 15. There is an outside chance she could walk away with a par. And that's all it is, just an outside chance. She's going to need to hold about a 45-foot bomb across the green, and more than likely it's going to be at best a bogey for Kari Webb. So we think we're going to have joint leaders, but Paula Creamer's got about a 10-foot putt for par at 16. Angela Stanford all of a sudden has a birdie putt to get it to minus 10, and Atha will find herself only one shot out of the lead. So things have changed so dramatically in that stretch between 13 and 15, and we have an amazing conclusion coming up in Singapore. Don't go anywhere. Fifteenth hole, third shot on the par four for Arthur Munoz. At the moment, she's two shots back, but uh, it looks as though Webby's going to make bogey or worse here. So Munoz will have that for par. And one hole up ahead, Teresa Liu. It's dropped all the way back to five under. And she's now all the way back in the ninth place. Start of the day tied for third with Munoz. So Teresa, uh, three over on her round. And uh, you know, at one point in this final round, Kari Webb, the Hall of Famer, had herself a four-stroke lead. And now it's... All but vanished. See what happens as uh, she finishes out here on 15, where she yanked her drive off the tee into the water left for the second time this week with something less than driver. Took a drop. Third shot to here. And this long putt now to save par and hang on to the lead. So she and Paula Kramer tied now at 10 under par. Paula, I mentioned her last victory was the 2010 U.S. Women's Open. This is her 80th start since then. Now this for sole possession of the lead for Paula. was the part of someone who is intent on winning. Wow, what a positive stroke that was. And we need another one here. Angela Stanford to make it a three-way tie for the lead at minus 10. One shy of the leaders, Angela Stanford. And you, you actually find it quite remarkable when you feel how, how poorly she has played. And I think she would agree with that, but she still finds herself in contention. Michelle Wee finishes birdie, birdie, and comes home with a round of 70.
to complete her week at minus five and presently a tie for ninth with Teresa Liu. That position may alter with everything that's going on out on the golf course. This has to go in for Atha. To stay one back from the lead. Very nicely done from where she was. That's a great up and down from the Spaniard. Sixteen. If fifteen was just about the toughest hole on the golf course, this isn't far behind. It measures 382 yards. Kate Burton, tell us why it's so difficult. Well, the fairway slopes from left to right, and it's a demanding drive to get away. Got to be careful. Certainly those right-hand bunkers do come into play. You see Webb most probably go once again with a three-wood, but today the pin is back. 34 yards on. We haven't seen many players go beyond the hole, and so a lot are coming up shy, and there's a slight rise in the green so if you are short it's not going to run down towards the hole and you're faced with a very difficult putt so you've got to get your distance control just right for your approach but accuracy imperative from the tee and it's only in recent times that anyone has been able to manage to birdie the 16th those three birdies have come from so yon yu in park and suzanne pedersen Sweaty Palms territory here. Four players within one shot of the lead. Here's one of them. well and truly over that is perfect just the wind has just swung around here it's actually coming across them left to right and that is a weird direction compared to what it was in the last hole so they change direction at 17 and almost come back the reverse way Paula Creamer joint lead now it's 156 yards the 17th today it's a front right pin. We've seen a couple of people chip in. Stanford one back. Now Anthony, uh, Angela's got that going a little further left of the bunkers. She'll clear the bunkers, but I don't know what sort of rough is over there. Well, she, it looks like it's sitting all right. It's just if she's far uh, uh, enough around the corner to have a good look at the hole. And it's a left pin as well, so that's going to make it even more difficult. Morgan Pressel's tee shot at 17. Even par for the round today. Oh, we know what she thinks of that. <laughs> she might have to reconsider. No. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take that one. I knew that all along. <laughs> you got a smile from uh, Paula Creamer. They're good friends off the golf course as well. Solheim Cup teammates. Yeah, that was a really idiotic yeah. shot, that one there. Ridiculous. From yeah, part of three inches coming oh, up. I can't stand it when I do that. Oh, I hate to tell you, this is heading bunker. This is going towards the left trap, so I don't think it's got enough Ooh. to get over. Oh, it is in the bunker, Sandy. Headed straight in. Wow, this is extraordinary. Well, she's really left with no shot because all of a sudden the ravine comes into play and she's going to be blocked out by the trees on the corner of that dog leg. Teresa Lou's second last tee shot of the week. A very productive week for her. She's using the contours to come up with a pretty good tee shot as well. So an outside chance of a two, but it will be a two for Morgan Pressel. But here's where the main game is. And here is the lady who looked as though the title was in her grasp with a three shot advantage. But things have changed dramatically, updating you on everything that's gone on. 
Paula Creamer. Perhaps her chance looked to be gone when she did this. Missing a par putt at 13, not even touching the hole. Morgan Pressel playing alongside Creamer today. She made a two at the eighth hole. Morgan Presser had been a couple of bogeys, also littered her scorecard, but look at this terrific tee shot on 14. She did go in to make a birdie, and that moved her to six under. Then at 13, Angela Stanford completed an extraordinary up and down, put her second shot in the bunker, and that's the reason for her reaction. Kari Webb did have a commanding lead, but this missed putt for a par on the 13th all of a sudden brought the chasing back an awful lot closer, chasing pack an awful lot closer. And the reason they were closer is because of Paula Creamer's birdie at 15. They took it a minus 10, and that would be good enough for a share of the lead with the events that were about to unfold. Atha Munoth got off to a bad start, bogeying for the first and the second holes, but found form here on the 14th, making a birdie. And Atha now finds herself just one shot behind Kari Webb. But this is the big shot. Kari Webb's tee shot at 15, put it in the water on, third, on Friday, and does the same thing on Sunday. And that cost her one shot, a bogey there at 15 for our leader, and then what about this for a par putt from Paula Creamer, Kate? This was critical for Creamer. Oh, look, the fist pump there. She knows exactly how big that putt is. There's big leaderboards around that part of the golf course. She'll know what the situation is. She's come up just short with her tee shot at the par 3 17th. We've seen already a couple of people hold this from off the green. That'll get her thinking. Kari Webb, no shot here, is going to have to come out sideways. And is staring right at another bogey, her third, in the space of four holes, if it happens that way. She finished so strongly yesterday in the mm. third round. I believe she was three under for the last five holes and chipped in on 16. Today is another story. Big putt, not in length, but in importance. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she's looking the goods, Paula Creamer. She's looking solid. Well, tricky little shot here for Angela Stanford. And trails by one. That really took off, didn't it? Hang on, there is water right there. Wow, that was close. She's made some very, very clever up and downs today and she'll need to make another one there to continue her chances, Angela Stanford. Meantime, up at 18, this group that was placed on the clock earlier, Teresa Lou, Paula Creamer and Morgan Press, or words, got around. Paula always carries a large gallery with her wherever she goes in the world. But now that she's up there, and by the look of things, about to hit the front. Now she's hit it in the trap every day this week, and she's done it again. She will not be able to believe that. And the tee's been moved forward as well today. And, uh, but the one consolation for Creamer, it is a par five. Pin is a front hole location. Great swing. Yeah. The power into the ball for Paula Creamer. Doesn't leave anything behind on that swing. Atha. Still very much in contention with what's happening with her three main rivals. Put this close and things could change even more. And it just doesn't come up the ridge. Only needed to be another two or three feet and that could have been down by the hole and she knows it. Once again, 
a big shot required by the LPGA and World Golf Hall of Famer Kari Webb, her third into 16. Oh, this was terrific. Oh, <laughs> that might be the shot that might do it. Drawing on her considerable levels of experience in the game. Boy, if she could make par here, that would be some par. Paula Creamer has fired her drive into the trap at 18 for the fourth successive day. It's just like we're rewriting the script from days gone by. Kari Webb didn't want to rewrite it at 15. She has, and now she's got to get on with it. Paula and Kari locked at minus 10. Angela Stanford with her issues at the 16th. Atha has an outside chance of a birdie. There are still four possibles in a dramatic conclusion at the Sentosa Golf Club. I hope you're enjoying our final round coverage of the 2014 HSBC Women's Champions. Angela Stanford decided to uh, pitch this shot off the fringe, trying to save par at 16 and stay within one of the leaders. And she has left herself quite a test. Up ahead, Paula out of the uh, fairway bunker at 18. forced to play this as a three shot par five and actually had to lay that up pretty far back coming out of that bunker she had to take a pretty lofted club and is about 30 yards short of where most people have been laying up on this hole now back to 16 Munoz to tie the lead time ahead at 18. Morgan Pressel also laying it up into position. She's had two twos on her card in the last four holes. The 14th and 17th, both the par threes. Can't figure in the win, but will likely get top 10. Well, this is a crucial part for Angela Stanford. This really, really needs to go in. Oh, it just slips by on the top side, so it's going to be a drop shot. So Angela drops back to minus eight. Kari trying to keep that bogey off the card has come up with a spectacular approach here but the job is not done yet to keep it level with Paula Creamer and then she's got the difficult 17th the par 3 and then who knows perhaps an opportunity to pick one up at the last statistically anyway it seems as though that possibility exists but it's such a tough pin at 18 no time to worry about that just for the moment. To remain in a share of the lead at minus 10. Well done. What a good par that was. And if she's holding up the trophy in a little while, Sandy, she'll talk about that par at 16. Yes, that was certainly a pressure pitch that she played in there. So very good par for Kari just to maintain that joint lead with this lady, Paula Creamer. 
So what do you do in this circumstance? There's the difficulty that faces her. It's the pin all the way down in the bottom left-hand corner. She's probably had a peek at a leaderboard. Do you get adventurous and really have a fly at it, or do you just try and stick to the game plan? Well, the problem that she's got is it's such a tough pin in that front left corner. She can afford to be a little bit right of the flag. She doesn't want to get probably too cute because it will feed around, but uh, you can see exactly what she's got there. The pin is just directly over the corner of the water there. And I can tell you, I paced it out this morning, Sandy. It's eight paces from the flag to the water, and it's about seven or eight paces from the flag up above to the ridge. Well, what she mustn't do here is get this shot on the wrong level. She can just try and get it in that bottom left corner. If she sort of puts it a little bit right of the pin, it will go, even if she's a little bit past, it'll go past and feed back around again. She's uh, lining up, you can see there, just to the right of the flag. Where's this going? Well, on the wrong level. Very much on the wrong level. It's a long, long way away, and that's what she didn't want to do on this hole. She left herself a really tough position to make two putts down there. Let's take a look at Paula. Drives into it, just drops down. You see she caught that a little heavy. Just open the club face up a little bit and let it drift out to the right side. Yes, I know, I feel your pain, Paula. Well, I rolled a couple of balls on the 18th this morning and you have to aim a long, long way away from the pin to get it anywhere near the pin from that top tier. All of that's still to come. Ather's par putt at 16. She stays one back. Tough par three to come, and then the par five final hole. With the honor at uh, par three, 17th, and this final threesome, Arthur Munoz. Again, the flag back today. So 156. Teresa Liu from an awkward spot here at 18. Just coming up a little shy, but she'll have the uphill putt. Should it be required, 18 will be played as the playoff hole, and it'll keep on being played until the deadlock is broken, if there is one. Got a hard bounce. Oh, yeah, didn't it, Justin? That's let that feed all the way up over that ridge. Then it runs away again at the back. So, again, she's got a putt that's going to come up a hill, over a ridge, and then down the hill. Not now, the position she wants to be in. Angela getting to the stage where she needs to get this very close. After that drop shot at 16, and that is not what she was after. So maybe her chance might have just disappeared. What a shame, because it was such a horrible start for her and the way she's clawed her way back into this event. So it stands like this. Paula Creamer's got a difficulty. She's on the wrong level at the 18th green. And Kari Webb has a long-range birdie putt coming up at 17. They're locked together at 10 under. Atha and Angela still in the fight. Paula Kramer, birdie putt on the final hole. Tied for the lead with Kari Webb. And this should be lightning coming over that bridge right about now. And she died it just about perfectly, it looked like, right at the top of the ridge, and then let gravity take over. That could have easily gotten away from her. This, of course, a woman who won the U.S. Women's Open at Oakmont 
on those greens. All right, Kari now with a similar putt on 17 for birdie. Beautiful, beautiful putt by Kari Webb. Fantastic control over that. So it is a three for her. And this week at the 18th hole, Kari Webb has made two pars and one birdie yesterday. All of that to be considered in a moment. Very quick putt for Morgan Pressel down the hill for a birdie at the last. That will turn out to be a round of 71 for the young lady from the United States, if she can hold that. Another good finish. Now, Atha can join the party here. Just to go in a share of that lead. Oh. Here we go. Atha gets it to minus 10. Paula has no certainty to stay there, and she could come from the clouds and tip them all out. This to finish at 10 under. For a par at the last in a round of 69. can only watch and wait. Is that elusive victory going to come Paula Creamer's way? Her faithful caddy Colin Can, who's been by her side in the good times and the struggles. It's an anxious wait. Well, it's certainly uh, becoming a dramatic finish. We thought Kari might have just uh, cruised along today, but it's not been the case. Morgan Pressel, for par. So she finishes in a tie for fourth. Big hug there for Paula. I mentioned Kari's record on the 18th. Atha has birdied the 18th two of the three rounds that she has played in. So here it is, 498 yards. They've moved the tee up, so it's actually 476. And you have to do what Paula wasn't able to do, avoid that bunker. Big bunker on the right there. You've got to keep just to the left-hand side of that. Then you've got to make the decision with a good drive. Are you going to land it in that area there, short of the green? Or are you going to throw caution to the wind and have a bit of a go? Kari now needs a birdie. Atha probably needs a birdie because we've got her in the mix as well now. So at least they know what they have to do. Paula has posted the score. But look where the pin is today. That really tight front left pin. You mustn't get on the wrong level on this green. All of a sudden, with one to play, Atha finds herself up at the top. She's only ever had one LPGA victory. She's having a long look at it, and that is long. She has cut off a lot of the water there. Took that very tight, Atha. It's a brave tee shot. Now for Kari. She wants what she did yesterday. Bunker. Paula's bunker, and we're not seeing it, so it's probably fairly. Oh, we just saw it duck out there, and it's fairly close to the lip. There it is, the ball of Kari Webb. Well, you can forget about going for the green in two now. It's yeah. a three shot hole. She'll have absolutely no choice as to do what Paula did and uh, just get it down the fairway. Angela Stanford, the victory pretty much out of the question now. But what a fight back it was. Looking at it a little anxiously there. 
Oh, and that's why she is also in that bunker. When they bring this tee forward, that bunker really comes into play. So she's going to collect a big check, but she's not going to get her name on the trophy for a second time. Galleries making their way down, snaking down 18. Well, you nearly have to say at the moment, advantage Affa. She's long, she's down the centre of the fairway. Yeah. Uh, she's more than likely will have a go. 18th hole, Kari Webb tied for the lead with Paula Kramer and Arthur Munoz. Oh, she took a big risk there. Instead of taking a plane layup, she was uh, she was going for the win there. Use that rescue club and watch where it catches the lip. Right there. And she just can't believe what has happened. Bogey's 13 and 15. And that is a deflated look. Angela Stanford shot there, her second shot. She's, uh, she's no longer in the mix. She's three shots back of the leaders. And a tie for fourth. And that opens the door for Hatha Munoz, who hit just a great drive. Let's see. Had the feel of the layup, didn't it? So she decided not to take on the risk of going for this thing in two. She certainly had the power to do so. It is a classic risk-reward par five with that water down the left side. And there, Paula Kramer and Colin Ken. And Paula already in posting 10 under thanks to a round of 69. Kari and Atha back playing 18, also at 10 under. Kari's third shot. And I don't believe she'll have a chance of uh, getting home from here. Let's see. She certainly tried to from farther back in this bunker. Still, she get up and down from where this ball ends up, get her par, and stay at 10 under. Need a volunteer to try and get this bunker for it. She is steaming that at herself. Normally, such a great ball striker gets herself in trouble off the tee. Now, scrambling to stay tied at the top. All right, Kari has to get up and down from here to stay tied at 10 under. Wow, that caught the top of the pine trees. It, it's, it's really gone in a bizarre direction for Kari over these last half dozen holes. It's been quite extraordinary. She's going to almost need a miracle to hold that. That is going to be so quick. And so, so advantage Atha again. Yeah, Kari's nearly put herself out of the every chance. You know, she can chip that in, but uh, well, that'll be a bonus if it goes in, but nearly put herself out of the equation. That is just so bizarre with what's gone on. Now, Angela Stanford, she was going great guns till she made a couple of bogeys in the last two holes. Oh, yes. Nice looking shot there from Angela. What Atha wouldn't give for one of those. Now Great fight back, as we said, from Angela Stanford, but it's all going to amount to nothing. And so Atha's been quietly going about her business, and she finds herself with the opportunity here of if she can get this up and down, she wins. She's just 75 from the front there near that yellow dot. Well, 
Rebecca will have that putt for victory. It's quick, but she's on the right level. That's the main thing. Paula continues to talk to nearest and dearest. This is a real pressure pitch for Atha. She's only won once before. This is one of the biggest events they play in. She would love to have her name on this trophy and what a great shot she came up with. She's been a study of concentration for most of the week. Her iron play has been simply outstanding. She's come up with the iron shot that she needed when she most needed it. And her putt has been pretty good as well this week. She started with 32 putts, but she's got progressively better. 30 yesterday, or 30 on Friday, I should say, 26 yesterday. And now she needs the putter to work one last time. Now you can see already Mikey Patterson, Kari's caddy, has the flag in his hand. She's probably going to try and do this without the flag there. She's got the putter. She knows this has to go in. It would be something if she hold this. Nothing would surprise me today. I'll hear the roar from a long way away if she does. You'd have to think that it's unlikely. But then again, we thought it was unlikely that Kari would be in this position when she led by three not that long ago. To keep alive her chances of getting a name on the trophy for a second time. Remarkable, truly remarkable. What she must be feeling right now. She was so in control and then it just all came apart. Once she missed that short putt on 13, things started to unravel. And she's played since then so many uncharacteristic shots. You could probably pick five or six of them. Yeah, I think you're right, Pete. It's uh, it's the shots that she's played which have um, been a little extraordinary. So Atha is faced with the prospect of holding this, and she records her second victory on the LPGA Tour and beats one of the finest fields you get to assemble every year. quick and it all falls down towards the water. That was never high enough and she's calling it down, clicking the fingers. And now she needs to hold that and we go to a playoff. It's an ugly little length putt too. It's just one of those that, uh, you know, she she's obviously realising the situation that she's in right now. Puts a little bit of pressure on you. Paula's off the phone and is getting herself ready perhaps for a playoff. Closing birdie for Angela Stanford. And unfortunately for the 36-year-old, it was lost in the first six holes today when she got herself to four over par, but she gave everyone a thrill with the way she fought back. No trophy today, but she's already got her name on it once. Paula knows now that the worst that can happen is a playoff. 18, 18, 18 until we get a winner. Sudden death. You can only imagine the thoughts 
that are surging through Kari Webb's mind at the moment. Well, Kari's going to be at least three over par for this back nine. Look at all those blue numbers in the run home. She led by three at one stage. Pressure can even affect one of the greatest the game has ever seen. Angela Stanford gets it in for a 75. So the two experienced people at the top their experience doesn't count for much. A bit of empathy from the two combatants. And the way is clear for Atha to take us to an extra hole. Spain and the United States. What a great finish from Athahara Munoz. Birdie at 14, a birdie at 17, and that all important par at the last. So the announcement being made by Kate Burton. Paula gets herself ready. Well, who would know? Does it make any difference Sandy that Atha will get out there with less of a time lag than Paula because Paula's been waiting there for a good 20 minutes or so. Oh I think for Paula the excitement of actually being in this playoff it hasn't been that it's not as though she's waited for you know an hour or so Carlotta Seganda there Seganda. The, her fellow Spaniard she very said, thrilled for I her. I spoke to her earlier this week and she said she was really tight with Carlotta and Belen Motho now Paula was out the back and had confirmation then that the playoff was happening so now it's time to get down to business again I, I still can't comprehend that we've got this playoff without Kari Webb in it it's amazing to think that at one stage she was three shots in front and we do go to a playoff and the Australian doesn't feature it's the USA and Spain and deservedly so Paula Cremas had a great last day and so has Atha so Yon Yu made such a charge on the final day but we go to one extra hole perhaps we'll play the 18th until we get a winner it's sudden death Paula Crema and Athahara Munoz for the HSBC Women's Champions title of 2014. The playoff is coming up. Right, they're uh, headed to the 18th tee. They give them a card rise as a professional golf. Try to uh, save some time for us here, and they will be playing 18 and nothing else but for this playoff. And you can see the 
498 yard par five with water all the way down the left side and it's no bargain if you play it too safe and hit it in that bunker and even without the Munoz hitting a terrific drive right down the heart of the fairway and long she chose to lay up the pin tucked on the left hand side very difficult to get to so this par five is uh, with all the pressure of trying to win a tournament has proven to be quite difficult for these last few groups Paula Kramer with nine career victories but again she has not won since the 2010 U.S. Women's Open this her 80th start since then the 27 year old American and Atha Munoz at the age of 26 has one career victory that came in the side base match play two years ago and coincidentally there was uh, probably the most controversial ruling we've seen for slow play in that event and we talked about these two final threesomes today and those two involved in that ruling were in these two final threesomes Morgan Pressel and Atahar Munoz and Morgan had won the 12th hole to go three up, she thought, but then was hit with a penalty for slow play and was ruled then to have lost the hole. So instead of being three up with six holes to play, she was just one up and quite upset, as you can imagine. Munoz went on to win that semifinal match, two and one, and then went on to victory. And that is the story of Hoffman Munoz's one career victory in the LPGA Tour. Has got iron. She's just having a loose yeah. up with that. I was going to say, I wouldn't be, be wondering what she was thinking. <laughs> no, that was just, remember, she's had that sort of half hour or so wait. Just a little loosen up there. It is only 160 or so to carry that trap on the other side. <laughs> Driver, it is. <coughs> now the line is, is sort of, you can see there's one, two, three, sort of five little mounds on that bunker in front, just on the other side of the water. You've nearly got to go over that second one from the left. And because, avoid that trap. Because with the angle of the tee, that trap really seriously comes right into focus. I think it'll mean a lot to her confidence if all of a sudden she plays a tee shot down here, she gets a long way down, all of a sudden she says, I finally avoided the trap. And then the thought's got to be in her head, maybe this is mine. Maybe I'm just destined to win this. All thoughts of sand blocked out. And that's the one she was after. Well, it's taken her five attempts, but she's <laughs> finally missed that bunker on the right. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> I, think she, I think she just wanted to have another go at that, Pete. <laughs> she's been really relaxed in the lead up to the playoff. So now the pressure goes back on Atha. Now you can see there Atha is not electing to take the driver. Yeah. She's been very self-assured with her driving most of the week and aiming it at Paula's former bunker coming up short so she is quite a fair way back there yeah she is she's uh, used that to take that right bunker out of play paula creamer's day a day that has taken her all the way into the playoff and in fact this is her week we look back at some of the moments she was able to hold a couple of great putts in a stretch of 10 and this one at 11 in round one. And that seemed to give her a bit of impetus. Then in the second round, trying to just keep the momentum going. 
that down at the seventh hole. The putter working along nicely. As she made her way to a first round 67, a second round 73, and then she came up with this remarkable shot yesterday. Second shot at the ninth hole. This was her best shot all day, and she had a few good ones. On the way to that 69, talked at the time about the fact that she and Colin Cairn, the caddy, like to plot their way around the golf course, and they did that very effectively. Then at the 15th hole, one of the toughest holes on the golf course, she was able to keep the putter working. Today, the start was good. Birdie at three, then this one at four. And by this stage, Sandy, your confidence must have been sky high and thinking, I can get this done today. Yeah, and she's probably starting to find too that uh, Curry, you know, might have dropped the odd shot at this point. And uh, Paula was, I mean, she had to go for it. Somebody had to come out of the blocks today and have a go. And Paula was right in there all day. It was a, an exceptional performance, around a 69. Just the one bogey on her car today at the 13th. Now she's taking the walk that she's been trying to take all week, and that is on the grass and staying on the grass at 18. Best drive of the week at the final hole. This will seem like a whole new hole to her today. She's come out of that bunker every day, so she's uh, finally, finally found the fairway and uh, in a good position there too. Atha is a lot further back, electing not to take the driver off the tee. So Atha, from that point, I mean, it's still 270 yards to get to the front of the green from here. So she will just play this down. She's far enough back where she can actually play it with the fairway wood. And there's that line again that the players look at that is so deceptive. Looks like just a mass of sand in front of you. Plenty of room to find the grass. Started that well out to the right. Now it's, uh, it's coming out of the rough. The ball's gonna be slightly above her feet. It was certainly further right than what she would be looking for positive out of that is that it gives you a good angle to come in. Let's take a look at this swing. I think she's such a nice looking player, Atha. Gets up on the toes there. It's really good to see these uh, players in slow-mo. Yeah, the ultra slow motion camera has been giving us some magnificent high definition, high definition pictures this year. So Paula's got a decision to make here. I don't think she's far enough down to even consider it. And it is just going to be a layup. She's got to be about 220 from the front of the green there. It's not an easy access green, this one. So just finding a spot down there where she's just going to have a wedge into the green. So both players playing this as a legitimate par five. done just right in the center there but you can see the shot that they have how close they do get this pin to that corner of the water on the 18th green we talked before sandy that it's only eight paces from the pin to the water's ledge and then it's about eight paces seven or eight paces from the pin above the hole to that ledge and that's where paula was above that ledge and that was what cost her the opportunity of putting for a birdie. So she knows that the most important thing she can do right now is just get it on that right level with her third shot. 
So now we come down to a couple of short shots. Probably slight advantage here to Paula. She's out in the middle of the fairway. Atha just uh, got hers in the edge of the right-hand rough, just kept it a little too far to the right. So the ball might be a little bit above her feet. Looking at the greens in regulation figures going back last year, well, they're going to hit the green. There's not too much doubt about that. But the greens in reg figures, Paula was 13th in greens in regulation. And Atha was ninth. So she's one of the more accurate iron players on tour. As Sandy said, she's come up just a little bit more right than she would have liked. So she's in that first cut. Is that going to impact on what sort of check she's going to be able to get on the ball always a, it's just a tad harder to control i think the, the bigger concern the concern here is the angle she's coming in everything falls from right to left the high side is on the right and the low side is where the flag is on the left it's quite a big hollow there falls just slightly Above her feet there and that's always going to encourage that little bit of left to right you're coming out of the rough you never quite get the spin and the control that you would do off the fairway it's lying pretty well though and she does have a bit of a backboard beyond the pin yeah it's not a bad angle Pete really because if she goes too long here it will run and come back around trying to work its way back. That was really well done out of the rough. There was no real spin on that ball, got it to land fairly softly. And the one thing she'll know from the first putt she had, even though it comes from a slightly different angle, is that she will need to give it a lot more right to left than she did with the first one. A little uh, smile of relief, I think, on Atha's face there. Let's take a look at the contact here. Caught it nice and clean. Beautiful contact now. Over to you, Paula, from the centre of the fairway. She's now looking at Ather's ball, sitting in there not all that far from the flag. Remember her approach shot last time. She got it a bit fat and it went beyond the pin to the wrong level. She simply must be on the same plateau as the pin with this. Otherwise, the putt becomes incrementally harder. She's managed that, and we're still at an even money bet. Yes, well, that's uh, anybody's guess there. Both of similar distance. Let's take a look at this shot of Paula's. It's a nice base, transfers over on that left side. Always gets up on her toes a little bit, even with a short shot. So both a similar distance from the flag. Atha coming from behind the flag. Paula a little more around to pin high. I talked about what they did with their greens in regulation stats, Sandy, so maybe we should look at their putting average. Paula... Her putting average was 30.13, put her 73rd on the list last year. Atha only just scraped into the top 125. And we know that this, this part for both players will be testing because of the pace. And sometimes you worry so much about the pace that you forget the line and sometimes it's vice versa. Looks like Atha is going to be the first to go. Now, she'll have a really good indication as to what this is going to do because it's not all that far from where she was the first time around today. Just half an hour or so ago. It's one of those putts where you just help it on its way. Can't afford to stroke it because it's easy if you don't hit the hole to finish up three, four, five feet past. This is 
is Ather's 102nd event on the LPGA. Career-wise, she's made 83 cuts, had 18 top tens and just the one win, and that was in match play too. But she has that one win, how she would dearly love that trophy at the end of today. She describes herself as happy, smiley, determined, and a bit stubborn. Determined would be the quality that she's called on here. Again, she misses to the low side. Tried to allow a lot more than she did the first time around on that putt. But it's, uh, it's a big swinging area, this. So now she can only stand back and watch what Paula Creamer does. So Paula Creamer will now have a putt for the title. She'll have a putt to stop that question being asked about the last victory, that 2010 US Open Championship, her ninth LPGA victory and her most recent round about three and a half years ago. The rest of the players are out there and they're ready for the celebration and they look more nervous than Paula does. <laughs> This for the win. To make it three in a row at the HSBC Women's Champions for the US of A. of it as well she thought she had it too but a little bit too pacey let's run on a bit as well okay smiling that's a nervous smile from paula let's take it take a look at her reaction here she thought she had it Judging by the reaction and the ooze and us that went up from the crowd, a lot of them <laughs> did too. It's time to forget about that first part and worry about the second. Shouldn't be an issue, but in this circumstance, there is no such thing as an easy putt. There's still a little bit of movement in these parts. She's coming from below the pin now. It'll just be inside the left. I saw that putt she hit on 16 from a long distance. So positive when she needed to hold it. And nice and firm into the hole, not giving that ball a chance to move anywhere. Almost looks as though she's enjoying this. I'm not sure how you could. <laughs> Maybe it's just those of us who stand outside the gallery ropes that feel the pressure. Because I think we're feeling it in here and I think the crowd around the 18th are feeling it, but it doesn't look as though Paula and Atha are feeling it that much. Maybe that's just the facade. Again to the 18th tee. They have tied with par fives. Golf carts will be at the ready. what the heart rate is at the moment for those players. 
they're going to have a few nuts on the way down there. Yeah, well, it's been a long day. Pretzels for Paula, <laughs> and uh, maybe some nuts for Arthur. It is a long day. You've got to keep your food intake up and, and your liquid intake up. It's been draining. It's been draining physically and obviously draining mentally. The second playoff hole about to come up. Spain versus the USA in Singapore. That's next. fighting for they're also fighting for a fair chunk of money as well 210,000 US dollars that to join Lorena Ochoa and all of the other names that are on there Jia Shin, Ai Miyazato, Kari Webb, Angela Stanford, Stacey Lewis second playoff hole now Paula will be trying very much to do what she did the last time just keep it inside that right bunker she's certainly not holding back it's a nice drive it's a very very good drive down 18 So now over to Atha. Now Atha didn't take the driver. Well, she's got the driver out this time. Interesting change of strategy. Good. And a great sign. Is she going to try and knock it down into the go zone? She's got a bit of run out of it. It'd be touch and go whether that's far enough down. Yeah, both players shouldn't be too far apart there. Similar bounces past that right bunker. We might be here for a while, Sandy, because remember, Paula Creamer had a playoff against G.A. Shin in 2012 at Kingsmill. Went to nine holes. That's a, that's a long playoff. <laughs> Let's take a look at... Atha, she changed her tactics here. She elected to go with the driver. Played just with a rescue before that and uh, was sort of well short of those bunkers. And this is the day of Atha Hara Munoz on the final day. Couldn't have got off to a worse start. Bogey at the first, bogey at the second. Her confidence shaken and then she picked herself back up and look at this down the slope. A brilliant birdie at the fourth. And when you hold putts like that, things can get back on track. And she holds another birdie putt at five. Well, this was a spectacular shot that she played into the par three, 14th, that back left pin, and gave herself that really great chance at birdie there. And then at 17, it still looked as though it was going to take a bit of a miracle for her to get there but when she rolled in that birdie putt and made it a two at the 14th and a two at the 17th it was very much a possibility and it remains so I'm getting lots of messages from around the world that you are sitting on the edge of your seats and you're not the only ones all right Arthur Munoz is first. In case you're wondering, Paula Kramer has all sorts of newfound power. Both players hit driver. I'm sure she's laying up. Yeah, that's nice. Still down the right hand side. A good angle again. Yep, opens up the angle to the green. Yeah. 
She gets it past horizontal a little bit there, but that's no drama. These players have such great control, but they have such great rhythm and timing. And I think that's the beauty of the women's game. It, it's just the rhythm and the timing is really quite superb. Now Paula with a lot of club in hand. She's going for it, trying to get it as far down there as possible. Is it going to pay off? Oh, now, Pete, the problem she's got, we can see, but she is on the green. Long way away, away, but... Okay, so... Paula is the first one of the two to take throw caution to the winds. She's got the results she wanted, but as you say, Sandy, it's a very difficult putt from there. Very difficult to putt from where she is. She's taken the chance. And here are the putts that we saw just a few moments ago. Atha knows that if she's got that putt, she's had a similar putt twice now, and she's almost got to convince herself to hit it a foot or so right of where she thinks it might be. Then Paula thought she had it. And have a look at the crowd behind her. Some of them did too. So depending on your outlook, the agony continues or the excitement continues or the drama continues. So Paula with the putter in hand. Johnny Scott just stepping off what Atha has left there. She is coming from a really good angle here, just on the right centre of this fairway, the pin tucked tight front left. Paula will uh, wander around and survey um, this incredibly difficult part she has. She is on in two though. But she's a long way away with one very severe slope in front of her. So now playing the hole in the conventional fashion, the way that most players have played it, good angle again to come in. She's found herself on the right level twice already. Needs to make it three. And she has made it three, and she's got a different putt this time. And that is not such a bad place to be putting from. Well, she knows it's going to move right to left because she would have seen, of course, Paula's wasn't that dissimilar to that a little while ago, maybe a little further around. But uh, she's got it in there. Now, Paula is in a very, very difficult spot. You can see her ball where she's walking to it two-thirds of the way back on this massive big green, but it's all downhill, down the big slopey ridge into this little bottom gully that it virtually is. Paula Kramer's playoff record, by the way, she's been involved in three playoffs, and she is one win and two losses in playoffs. And from what I can see looking at the records, I can't find Atha having been in a playoff. Now, when you look at this, it, it is such a difficult thing to convince yourself to hit the ball so far out to the right. Now, Pete, you were out there this morning. You hold something pretty spectacular uh, rolling it on this green this morning. Well, I did, but... It's not in the pressure of a playoff. <laughs> and what I found there, Sandy, is exactly what I just said, that you don't even look at the hole. You have to aim it out so far to the left as we look at it now. But that was from a, a bit closer to the ridge. Paula is a bit further back than that. So she knows once she hits the ridge, it's going to take off. So she's got to have that really dying at the top of that ridge and, and she's got to also work out how far up that ridge she's got to go because it's going to take a pretty sharp left turn. Now here's what we've spoken about with the players, breaking the putt down into compartments. First part of the putt is to get it to 
a spot on the ridge and to get it there and practically stop it. And then from there, just try and work out what it's going to do when it hits that rid ridge and runs down towards the hole. Perhaps the family, well worth another look. This is not going to be the last time we see it, nor should it be. there for the win and an eagle amazing everyone around the 18th is in disbelief none more so than this young lady 27 years of age and the words of that great golf commentary all those years ago maybe maybe yes sir Victory number 10 to Paula Creamer in the most amazing of circumstances for the presentation of the trophy after the HSBC Women's Champions of 2014. Let's head down to Kate Burton. For the second time in this tournament's history, we've witnessed a playoff and has there ever been a more dramatic playoff than the finish that we have all just been a party to. We have a new champion in 2014, Paula Creamer, and I'm delighted to introduce Guy Harvey Samuel, the Chief Executive Officer of HSBC Singapore, who will shortly present the magnificent trophy but oh my goodness me Paula I, can, I think I, I can feel you shaking I am, I am I'm shaking oh my gosh this has been such a, um, a long time coming and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Colin uh, my caddy is my, my best friend he's been there through it all and um, we've had such a good last seven months um, just working on what we've been doing and uh, obviously it's a, a bit of luck going in on that one I've putted it several times today but um, you know Arthur hit a great shot in there and um, you know she's such a good competitor as well but uh, you know you, you when that happens you just you know you, there's nothing you can do <laughs> you must have had uh, nerves of steel coming down the stretch in regulation play Kari Webb was playing well mm -hmm. she fought her down the stretch and you hold some brilliant putts I, I did um, you know I, I definitely tested myself coming down the stretch that's for sure I had to make a bunch of six seven footers um, but you know I just kept grinding it kept on you know just doing what Colin and I were you know planning on doing and um, you know it was fun playing with Morgan um, and Teresa, you know, it's nice playing with with one of your best friends, and uh, you know, kind of kept me calm out there. But um, you know, it, it was it, it was a grind all day, and like I said, this has been a long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> you snapped that winless streak. Yes. You went for the green in two in the second mm -hmm. hole of Sudden Death Playoff. You knew the putt was going to be fast. Can you talk us through that enormous eagle putt? I mean, that it, it reminded me a bunch of a, a, a putt in um, Solheim Cup um, that I, I, I had a long one. I played with Christy Kerr and. Um, it's one of those putts where if you just get it in the right spot, it's going to you know, fall down. But um, I could stand there all day long and, and putt that, and I don't think get it within you know six, seven feet. And um, you know, it, it just happened, and I finally hit the fairway the first two times um, in the playoff. And you know, I was previously in the playoff you know, a couple years ago, and I refused to go to eight, nine more holes, so I was going to try to end it. <laughs> you were also just on the phone a second ago. Yeah. Who were you trying to call? I was calling my mom and dad. Um, you know, they've uh, obviously obviously seen it all um, but you know Derek was the, the second one but I think my, my dad would you know we're not married yet so dad would uh, <laughs> would have been a little bit upset with if I called Derek first but um, hi mom hi daddy Derek um, but uh, you know it is it's it's pretty neat when you can share it with everybody yeah you must have woken them up as well because I'm just looking at the time here in Singapore so uh, they weren't expecting that call maybe they were no I whatever call it was I called them actually before the playoff too and you know they just said you know stay calm be be happy and um, you know you don't have to prove anything just go out there and play some golf. How good does it feel to be back in the winner's circle oh, again? It feels so good. Oh my goodness. Um, I can't I can't tell you how good it, it really does feel. Um, this is a big win. This is a huge win. Um, 
you know, and it's just a lot of hard work. So well, the hard work has certainly paid off. Thank Guy, you. would you please present the magnificent trophy to our 2014 HSBC Women's Champion, Paula Crema. Smile has lit up the LPGA for a long time now. She's been one of the game's great ambassadors. But that's a, a special smile from Paula because, as she said, the drought is over. She's been working so hard to end it. And she's obviously very emotional about it, and you can understand that too. Oh, and just a little bit excited as well, isn't she? It's, uh, she's waited a long time, and it's simply awesome. So what does that mean as far as the CME race to the globe is concerned? Paula Creamer now has vaulted to the top and leads from Kari Webb, Jessica Corder and a Nordquist, obviously our four winners so far this year at the top. But Paula Creamer has gone all the way to the top and that's why she's holding the trophy there with Guy Harvey Samuel. Well. We saw a miracle finish for Shan Shan last year, but that's right up there with it, Sandy. That oh, was incredible. Pete, this event always has so much excitement and drama about it, and it just doesn't get any better than that. We have had some magnificent golf over the last couple of weeks. On behalf of all of our team, headed by Michael O'Dwyer and Wayne Suter, Peter Donegan saying farewell from Singapore, and the HSBC Women's Champions, well done, Paula.